At this point, it seems like any comic film will be better than the last two I reviewed. I was not, however, expecting something this much better. This just had all the elements that mark a great movie. It was paced so well, which was pretty refreshing to find in a new superhero movie. I think even Spider-Man had a few slow parts. Matt Reeves' direction was superb, as was the cinematography. This movie looks really good. Gotham looked like the crime-ridden, corrupted city you always hear it is, but Reeves chose to show, not tell. The action scenes were really engaging and not too hard to follow. I mean, Batman's supposed to be proficient in like a hundred different forms of martial arts, you definitely get to see that displayed. It also had one of the most gripping car chase scenes I've seen since Baby Driver. The score also set the tone for the movie really well. Never got too obnoxious, and while it wasn't quite as bombastic as Hans Zimmer's score for the Nolan Batman trilogy, it was really fitting for what this movie was, a fairly grounded yet gritty superhero movie. That's another thing. I keep throwing around the term superhero movie, which I gotta say, this movie doesn't really feel like one. This take on Batman was definitely the most realistic take we've ever gotten on him, something that will definitely strike a nerve with some people. Rather than a superhero, Batman for the first time really seemed as if he was simply a vigilante who has access to billions of dollars of technology, but still. Robert Pattinson did an excellent job with his character. Batman's still somewhat new to the job, but proficient in what he's doing, and he has a character, along with an art. I'm not talking about Bruce Wayne. Batman isn't just a mask or a symbol in this one. He's a full, fleshed out character with an arc and everything. This is definitely my favorite iteration we got of Batman. Not Bruce Wayne, however. There really isn't any dichotomy between the two personas. And while it's clear here that Batman is Bruce's true identity, he just seems so sulky and downtrodden with the mask off. Not the charismatic billionaire playboy who buys hotels on a whim that we've seen in the past. I don't know, wasn't really keen on that choice. But back to Batman not being much of a superhero. He's way more of a detective in this film, which makes a lot of sense because DC stands for Detective Comics. Anyway, he and Jeffrey Wright, who played Jim Gordon, had really great chemistry. Their coordinated relationship solving crimes seem pretty genuine. The plot centers around finding a cryptic serial killer who's targeting all the corrupt men of power running Gotham, and the movie does an excellent job creating a suspenseful, intriguing tone. I read this movie was influenced by Seven, and it definitely has that catch a killer kind of vibe to it. I like that. Paul Dano, the guy who played the creepy priest in There Will Be Blood, yeah, no surprise, but he most certainly delivered on the scary, calculated psychopath. His portrayal of the Riddler gave the character a very pretentious and ominous presence. I could say a lot more about this movie. I loved it. I am, however, pressed for time. So, The Batman. This is probably the third, or dare I say, even the second best Batman and DC movie made to date. It perfectly nails the gritty tone previous DC movies have tried to achieve, while showing a different and compelling side of Batman. It's probably the best comic movie we've got since Infinity War, I think. While it's a bit slow, it never drags. Overall, amazing movie I would strongly recommend. 9 out of 10. Go see it.